القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى ال بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المحسنين الهاديين الذين تاب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد First, I would like to request Surah Al-Fatiha for the soul that we gathered here to remember me Allah bless his soul, Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> Also another Surah Al-Fatiha for Yawm al and Yawm Al-Qumat Especially our Shuhada in Pakistan, may Allah be pleased with their soul, Al-Fatiha Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawm Al-Qumat Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina al-sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-ladhina amda alayhim Qayr al-mahzub alayhim al-adhalim Now another surat al-fatiha for ourselves When we become marhumeen or marhumat May Allah be pleased with us Al-Fatiha Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إذن الشراط المستقيم سراط الذين عمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الروح كل الروح من أمر ربي وما أوتيتم من العلم إلا قليلا صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد This ayah was revealed upon our dear prophet Rasulullah that in regarding to an action that took place at the time of the Prophet. One day the Quraysh, they chose two people among themselves. And they asked them to go to talk to the leaders of Ahlul Kitab, Christians and Jews. They said, go and talk to them and see what is the advice they can give us in terms of how to deal with the Prophet Muhammad. Those two people, they went and met with the leaders of Christians and Jews, and they told them the story that they were sent for. And the leaders of Christians and Jews told them, according to our experience, if you ask three questions to Muhammad, you will be able to know if he is a true messenger or not. Ask him three questions. But those three questions, if he answers all the three questions, then he's a false prophet. He's a liar. But if he answers two, and say the third one, only Allah knows, then he's a true messenger. Then follow him. They said, okay. Now what are the questions? They came back to Mecca and told their leaders, that we went and met with the leaders, the Christians and Jews, and we told them your message, and this is what they said. But what are the three questions? Question number one. They said, ask Muhammad, and I'm quoting them. Ask Muhammad about young men who left their city, their town, in protecting their religion and their faith. Who are those people? And what is their story? That is question number one. 
Question number two, ask Muhammad. There was a man who is able to go around the globe so many times in a day. Who is that man and what is his story? Number three, ask him, what is Ruh? And what is the story about Ruh? Three questions. Take him. That's it. Now we get a vim. We get a power. Let's go face Muhammad. They went to Prophet Muhammad. When they met Prophet Muhammad, they said, We came to ask you the three questions. They said the questions. The Prophet said to them, Listen, I will answer your question tomorrow. That tomorrow came. The Prophet said to them, Come the next day. Until Jabrail came down, some narration said it took 15 days. Jabrail didn't come down to the Prophet. So after 15 days, Jabrail came and the Prophet asked him, Ya Jabrail, why this absence? Then Jabrail said to the Prophet, and it's mentioned in the Quran, Wama natanazzalu illa bi amri rabbi. We don't come down unless he gives permission. The reason why I didn't show up because I was not okay to come down. However, the Prophet ﷺ then received the message about the question that people ask. Who were the young men that he's talking about? Just to give you a short story, he, they were asking about Ashabul Kahf. And these Ashabul Kahf, brothers and sisters, they're amazing. I'm just going to share with you one question as the take home to think about. <coughs> just thinking about it. Because in the life of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, there are two group of people. He constantly talk about them. Until even some narration said, after Imam Hussein was killed, people could hear him talking about one of them. And that is, Ashab al Allah before and after, even after Imam Hussein was killed, the narration said they could hear like the voice is ringing, the voice of Imam Hussein was ringing, is repeating the word, أَفَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِ الْحَجَمِ Why Imam Hussein is talking about them? You do ever start to think and learn why? Because remember, Imam Hussein wouldn't say something unless there is a wisdom behind it. That is group number one to think about. Group number two, Imam Hussein talked about them before the tragedy of Karbala was a kaum salah. The people of Salah, Imam Hussein talked about them. When? When his son was shot. Ali al Asghar, he said, Ilahi, la yakunanna hada ahwanu alayk min fasilina al Salah. Ya Allah, this crime shouldn't be less compared to their baby camel who was killed by the people of Saudi. Why is he mentioning them? They have to be a reason. What is the reason? What is the similarity? This is something else. Number three of those people I was then mentioned who happened to be a prophet. Out of 124,000 prophets, the only prophet he chose to talk about was Prophet Yahya ibn Zakaria. And he said, مِنْ هَوَانِ الدُّنْيَا أَنَّهُ قُتِلَ يَحْيَ بُنْ زَكَرِيَا وَأُهْدِيَ رَأْسُهُ إِلَى بَغِي مِنْ بَغَايَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيَ That is Imam Hussain. Why these people? What is the reason? I think this is something to learn. Why is he talking about that? What is the wisdom behind it? It's a lesson for us. This is to think about. That is to share with you about the importance of Ashab al -Kahab. So that is the first question the people of Quraysh was asking the Prophet. Question number two. Who is the man that the Prophet, the, uh, they asked the Prophet, he went around the globe. Who was that man? These two answers, you can find them in Surah al kahf That man is called Dhul Qarnayn. Also, it's mentioned in Surah Al-Kaf. 
Now, I don't want to talk about the two. I just want to talk about the third one. The third one they ask is about Ruah. Yes, Alunaka and Ruah. The word yes, Alunaka in the Quran was repeated so many. Number one, yes, Alunaka and El Khamar. They continuously ask about alcohol. Number two, yes, Alunaka and El Qital. They ask you about war. Another one, yes, Alunaka and El Mahir. Yes, Alunaka and El Anfal. So many questions. One of them is, they were asking about Ruah. Then Allah answered, Ya Rasulullah, Qulil Ruhu Min Amri Rabbi. Tell them, the Ruh is a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here, Ruh, brothers and sisters, is mentioned in the Quran four times. For the word Ruh in the Quran comes to mean four different things. So the word Ruh is not just what we think. Usually when we hear the word Ruh, we think it's a human being life. No, but the Quran used the word Ruh to mean four different things. Number one, do you know that one of the names of Quran is Ruh? The Quran that you read every day, one of the names Quran itself, it tells you that the name of the Quran is Ar-Ru'ah. Where is that in the Quran? It says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا Allah SWT says, Ya Rasulullah, we sent you a revelation happened to be a ruh from us. In tafsir, the word ruh there, it means Al-Quran. So when you hear the word ruh, always think that the Quran also, one of the name of the Quran is Ar-Ru'ah. That is number one. Number two, the word Ruah, it means a special angel. Special angel that some scholars said that angel always comes on this planet once a day, once a year. That angel, only one time he comes. And amazing. Sometimes when Allah wants to talk about the angel, sometimes he mentioned that root first before he mentioned the entire angel. <laughs> Amazing. Who is that root? You read in Surah Al-Qadr. Tanazzalu al-malaikatu wa When? At the one month, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shaf. That root only comes down only one time in the year, and that is during the night of Qadr and that's it. That is that rule. Sometimes Allah mentioned rule first and then the angel. Sometimes he mentioned the angels and then the rule. It's like sometimes he's ahead, sometimes he up and after the angel. Now let me show you some of the eyes in the Quran. Like here Allah said, Tanazzalul Malaika Tukwaru. Here Allah mentioned uh, the angel and the rule. In Surah al Naba, Allah mentioned rule first. And then the angels. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ That is the importance of that angel. Now, to understand about this ruh, it's so amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is like, he doesn't count Him as part of the angels. It's like He is so special that Allah mentioned the angels and then goes and mentioned the ruh separately. That is the significance of that rule. That is number two. Number three, a ruh, the third one in the Quran, is a spirit which Allah supports the prophet and the imams and mu'min. If a person is a mu'min, a prophet, a wali, Allah has a special ruh, and that ruh, what do they do? They go in support of the mu'mineen, whether it's the prophet or imam or wali, that ruh, all they do is to support. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, one of those prophets we have given that support is Isa alayhi salam. وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدْسِ Allah said we supported him, Isa alayhi salam, with the spirit of God, Ruhul Quds. 
That is number three. Number four in the Quran, which I just wanted to emphasize that, and that is the ruh of human being. This ruh is a special, brothers and sisters. Now you come to the Quran, Allah says, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ You want to know the importance of that ruh? That ruh is amazing that Allah created human being and human being was completely done because human being is formed of four things. One is called al aql Two is called Al-Nafs, the soul. The three is called Al-Badan, the body. The fourth is called Ar-Ruh. Now, if you have these three parts without the Ruh, then the body is like useless. Allah created Adam. Adam was there. The Aql was there. Nafas is there. The body is there. But the Ruh is not there. And Allah said, listen angels, Adam is there. But he is like he does not deserve the respect until that Ruh is placed in him. And Allah said, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِ As soon as the Ruh enters, Allah said, then I want you to bow down for Adam. And that is the importance of Ruh. That is why even this is an effect issue. If a woman is pregnant with a baby, and that baby has not been given a Ruh, and that baby was killed, or that baby, something happened, the woman has miscarriage. What is the ruling in Islam? They say there's nothing. Because it's not considered a living. Now, one day the ruh enters that body, which our maraja, they say, it happens after the third month. If a person happened to cause, to cause the miscarriage of that woman, what happened? In Islam, he will be killed exactly like he killed somebody else. The difference is what? Ruh. The same body. He is in the one mother's womb. But the ruh has not been placed in there. And something happened, there is nothing. But as soon as the ruh enters, one minute later, a person caused, not even a person, the mother herself caused the baby to lose, to be, uh, to be miscarried. What happened? Islam said the mother has to pay a day. To whom? She paid to her husband and the family. If the, the baby has brothers, then they have the right to have. If the father and the mother, they both agreed to do the miscarriage, right? what happened? They still have to pay compensation to whom? To the family of that boy, that child. The difference is a ruh, which is put in, the, in, the, in there, that baby. That is the importance of ruh. Now, with that rule, brothers and sisters, this rule is amazing, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it. This rule, brothers and sisters, is absolutely different compared to the other four. Number one, the other three. See, the akal, it grows, and it can become weaker. The akal can become stronger, it can become weak. The body can become stronger, can become weak. The nafas, can become good and it can become bad. The body itself, Allah said, The body, it can be strong, it can be weak. I the same thing. The only thing that doesn't change from day one till the day Allah created, till the, till the day of judgment, is the ruah. It doesn't become small. It doesn't become big. It doesn't change. It's the way it is from day one. Even though all these twin changes, that is why you and I, when a baby is two years old, he said, me. He becomes 15 years, he said, me. The same body, it becomes 30 years, he said, me. The same body becomes 40, 80, he said, me. Allah, think about it. That the same body is not the same body when it was two years old. 
That body is not the same when it becomes 15 years old. That body is not the same when it became 40. It's not the same body when it becomes 70. But why me, 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 me? They say you are not referring to your body as a body, but referring to the ruh. Even now, my body can change, can go through different changes, but my ruh stays the way it is, and it doesn't change. Now this body, brought this ruh, when Allah first created it, it was by exile. Where? In Alam and Arwa. It was just exile. Then it was transferred to another world called Alam al al -Asla. It was by itself. The one of the world that it get united with the body is an Alam al arham In the mother's womb, the ruh unite with the body. Then after that, they stay together in the Alam al shahada together. Then in this world, they depart. They leave each other. Now, then they unite again more in the Barza for few minutes, for questioning. Then after that, they separate again. They don't meet again until they blow the second horn for Yom al What's the Quran said? فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي السُّورِ فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ then the body and the soul and the atom, they all combine, come together for another life, which is the last one, Yom al -Afr. This rule, brothers and sisters, is amazing. When we are sleeping, what happened to the rule? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because this rule, brothers and sisters, is amazing. If you go to the, to the Quran to see how much our, our Imams, they talk about rule, you will know the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ruh, when we asleep, you know what happened? They say the ruh, what it does, itself leaves, but it leaves its shadow. Allahu Akbar. It leaves its own shadow in us. And that shadow is what gives you an eye, the breathing. But the ruh itself, it leaves. And Quran says in Surah Al Zumar, it says, Allah will anfusa hayna mawtiha wallati lam tamun fi manamiya. Allah said, We take the ruh from the people when? At two stages. One stage, when they are completely dead, dead. Two, when they are asleep. They all go back to Allah. <coughs> then Allah said, فَالَّذِي فَيُرْسِلُ الَّتِي فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهَا الْمَوْنِ وَيُرْسِلْ وَيُرْسِلْ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ أَجَلِ مُسَمَّى When the time of waking up comes, which is when your alarm started to go off, when your wife is waking you up, then Allah does what? Allah said, now you can go back. Right? For your sin. Allah said, then we sent it back. Now you listen careful from the Quran. When he said, well, your sin, we send it back. Meaning, it wasn't there. It was where? At Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some narration said, not only it goes to Allah, sometimes it get lose a travel. Sometimes while you are in sleep, you sleep, you go to Japan, you meet somebody, you talk, you eat, mashallah, you laugh, you clap. Yes, is that rule? Because you know what? That rule doesn't need anything to stop it. Because that rule, it doesn't need a visa to travel. <laughs> That rock doesn't need a passport to travel. That rock, he has a visa of everywhere at any time he wants to go. That is how Allah has equipped this rock. This rock, brothers and sisters, the power that Allah gave it is that it can see, it can feel, it can sense, it can do everything, whether with the body or without the body. But it only needs the body as a shield just in this world and barza. Other than that, it doesn't need anybody. I don't want to go much into that. But what I just want to talk about is that the last point, because there is no time, is that this ruh in Alam al Barza. When this ruh goes to Alam al Barza, what happened to it? Because a lot of people, we think after we die, that's it. The ruh goes somewhere and that's it. There is nothing going on. No, 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 that's not what happened. See, that narration say that when the root gets to the Alam al-Barzah, the first thing that happens, 
is that the other Awa, the other spirit, which is already dead, what did they do? They come to me. You get the news. This rope has arrived. So they go there. What did they do? It's like you and I. When you go back home, in the neighborhood where you came from, what happened? Suddenly the news spread around. Then what happened? The neighbors started coming in to visit you, to see you. And then the first thing they do, oh, how is this brother? How is this sister? Is she, oh, how is he doing? Is she working? Is he this? They try to get the information about where you came from. The same thing in Alam and Barsa. When somebody gets there, the first thing they do is to gather around them, and then they start a question. How is this? How is that? How is my son, my children? How is my dad? How is, how is, how is? And then if they get a good answer, is he praying? Is he fasting? Is he doing all the good things? If they hear yes, 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 then they become so. If they hear no, 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 what happened? They become sad. Here is what I want to emphasize, brothers and sisters, because one of the most important thing is we need to know that in Alam al Barza, one thing, the rule is in need. Always. Nothing else is important. It's not like in this world. This world. A person has a lot of needs. I need a car, I need a house, I need a clothes, I need a food, I need an Alam al Barza, there's only one need. That's it. And that need is the pleasure of Allah. Everything the person is hoping and wanting is nothing. It's not like here. They need car, house, money, food. No. Only what they need is is Allah. Things to do to please Allah. That is why they say, if you have marhum, you have to be careful. Because everything that you do, if it's bad, it reflects on them in that world. You make them sad in that world. If you do something good, positive, you make them happy in that world. Now I know we all have marhum in. What can we do to make them happy in that world? What can we do in this world as we still live in to make sure that we secure that world for them so always they are happy? Number one, this is our, this is you and I, brothers and sisters. Number one, be careful about sin. Anytime you and I commit sin, you know what happened? you cause them to be unhappy. That is number one. So, if you want to make your marhum happy, be careful, not just for yourself. Between you and Allah is a different story. We're talking about your marhum. Anything that you do, prayer, I don't do it on time, it makes them unhappy. Fasting, I don't, it makes them unhappy. Anything that I do to displease Allah, you are automatically displeasing me. That is number one. Number two, one of the things you can do to make them happy. Every little thing that you do in this world for the sake of Allah, it gets to them too. And it doesn't take a lot, brothers and sisters. One of the things we can do, brothers and sisters, a little things for them. For our marhum, our marhumin. Number one, see a smallest thing like I buy a sleepers. And how much sleepers cost? Five dollars, ten dollars, right? Doesn't cost that much. You put it in the masjid, at the bathroom. Anytime somebody used them for wudu, if the intention was for my marhum, what happened? They get the thawab of these as sadaqatun. Because sometimes these things we think that I have to spend uh, so many money before I can do sadaqah. Sadaqah jariya is not that much sometimes. There are little things we can do and our marhumin can receive that sadaqah jariya. One of them is sleeper. Number two, brothers and sisters, you buy tasbiya. You put it in the masjid. Anytime somebody pray and they take the tasbih, they say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. What happened? You are sending sadaqatul jariya to whom? your marhum. That is number two. Number three, you buy a Quran. 
You put it in the masjid for the sake of my marhum. Anytime somebody opens the Quran and they read Surah Al Fatiha or any other surah in the Quran, what happened? It's considered sadaqaton. That is number three. Number four, you buy this to our command. You put it in the masjid. Every Thursday, somebody takes it, open the Arabic document, every single word he read or she read, that the word is divided between the three. One is you, the buyer, two, your marhum, three, the disciples. That is a small token we can give to our marhumin. And the last and not the least, brothers and sisters, always, every single time when we remember our marhumin, we should always remember to read Fatiha. It's very important, brothers. Sometimes we forget, we get caught into this material world and we forget them. Because if you remember them, they say someday you and I will be also. If we forget them, what happens someday we will be also forgotten. The important is every time, brothers and sisters, we should always remember them. And the more you remember them, you're remembering yourself as well, automatically. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, Ya Rabbil Alameen, to remember our marhumin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, the soul that we gathered here tonight, to remember, Ya Allah, every word we have said tonight, Ya Allah, we ask you to send the reward to his grave, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, everything that we have done tonight, in remembrance of his name, Ya Allah, we ask you, send the thawab to him, Ya Rabbi. Amen. Ya Allah, we ask you, we all have marhumin and marhumat. Ya Allah, be pleased with all of them, Ya Rabbi. Amen. Ya Allah, when our time come to go, let it be the best time of our lives, Ya Rabbi. Amen. Let's recite Qulhu Allah three times for his soul. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qulhu Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم